Uh, whites. I'm going to start with whites first. And um, the reason why uh, we want to talk about this, it's because, not because uh, all the whites are necessary when we paint. Um, mostly, I feel like this is important because when we go to an art store, uh, we see so many products and um, it's very confusing to find out exactly which one uh, do we end up buying. Because there, the, again, there's like a, a bunch of products that do different things. And especially with white, um, it could get really confusing. So uh, I'm not advocating for us to go get more whites because ultimately this is all about getting the paint that we are comfortable with. And to make things uh, even worse, um, uh, every brand of paint labels their whites differently. So not only there are a bunch of whites, but um, each brand has their own. So it's really frustrating and, and, and very, um, you know, very confusing. So I'm going to try to explain um, the, the best options that we have, but also really briefly what the rest of the whites uh, do. Um, because then when we go to a store, we'll, we'll be able to at least say, okay, well, you know, I know that uh, this white um, does this and I don't need it. Uh, or uh, I just want to try this other white because I know uh, uh, it does something different and I want to give it a try. So Gamblin is the company that we use because we love it. It's uh, professional grade paint. Uh, they're based in US. Uh, the quality of the paint is amazing and they do a great job um, educating um, uh, uh, with their products, I guess. So they're, they're, they're interested not only in uh, selling but also in just providing information and technical stuff. Um, so they started with one and now they have uh, seven. Yeah, seven. So I think they did something really smart here, um, uh, which is that instead of like starting their presentation, I guess, or their website with their white, which is what everyone else does, they named the four criteria that they use uh, to um, uh, categorize the whites. And I think this is exactly what we want because um, if I address this presentation, I say this, this white does this and the other white does that, we will have to go through every single manufacturer uh, of paint uh, because everyone uses different labels. Um, so, and also what happens is that regarding, um, if you buy a book about oil painting, uh, on the book you'll have different uh, uh, names uh, defining the whites and it, it does that doesn't really match that what's on the market maybe the book is out of print and then there's a different um, something that's been phased out or upgraded so everything is really frustrating so anyhow the four um, criteria it's basically the texture and the mark making they call it like that but it's the thickness of the paint basically how thick or how fluid it is um, so they're whites that make more of an impasto um, effect and they're whites, white paint, I should say, that it's very buttery and soft. So this is one criteria to classify the whites. The second, it's the drying time. So how fast it dries and how slow it dries. And um, so this is important because sometimes um, uh, you want to do something in one single session and maybe you want a, a white that dries faster because you, you're not intending to do uh, more work on the painting. I mean, it's something to consider. I, I mean, it's not the most important for me. Um, the third one for me, it's the most important category in choosing a white. It's the tint strength and opacity, which means how much coverage uh, the white has and also um, how uh, much it changes when you mix it with other paint. And this is the ultimate category for me because this is all I want in a white, um, uh, you know, or, or, or all I look for. It's a white that has a lot of coverage and uh, at the same time that I only need a little bit to change the paint a lot. So for me, this is all there is, but um, I think once you get to the next level, I guess, um, some people feel like this is too much. And, and I'll try to be able to explain why sometimes we feel like this is too much in our own practice. It happens to me all the time. And I think you'll be able to connect with that experience. And finally, the temperature. Honestly, it's the least important category in uh, choosing a white because sometimes depending on the oil that they mix in with a pigment, you'll get warmer whites with the linseed oil or you'll get cooler whites with the safflower oil. Uh, this is like um, really 
going to a, a level that I don't, I, I, I hope I don't get there in my lifetime because I know that some people are really nitpicking on the temperature of the white. I think it's a little bit nonsense. But anyhow, uh, it's an important category to uh, be aware of when, when choosing whites. Um, so then be, uh, they explain a little bit um, each of the categories. So basically the first one, which is the thickness, they divide it into three, the soft, the buttery, and the stiff. So um, on the soft one, uh, they name the radiant white, uh, which is the most brushable, they say, uh, the least amount of resistance. Uh, so this is the white that we use in our palette, the radiant white. It's soft. I love it because then I don't have to use a thick bristle brush to manipulate it. Um, with the brushes, the soft brushes that we use, it works wonderfully. So for me, this is a great white, the radiant white. The buttery white, uh, it's sort of like in between soft and hard. I guess it's the Goldilocks of uh, whites. <laughs> I don't know, when, it, when, it, when we get into these gray areas, uh, I just feel like uh, you know, it's a waste, it's a waste. But anyhow, some people don't like it super hard and they want something that's a little bit uh, stiffer than the soft white. So then they have the titanium white and the titanium zinc which are the most popular whites uh, in the market. So um, basically they, they call them like a middle ground on, in texture, uh, straight out of the tube, they, are, they, they have a short texture, which means that they break cleanly and quickly from the brush and they make beautiful crisp in pasto mar, but at the same time, it's not too stiff um, to use, um, you know, with a knife, I guess, or, or, or uh, with a brush. So, um, yeah, so it says that both can be nudged, uh, meaning like you can add medium or not, you can make them softer. So um, anyhow, so I don't know. I mean, uh, the titanium white is the white that we used earlier and we switched to radium white. And I'll explain at the very end why. Um, and then they, the stiff whites, they have to, the flake white, which it's a, a relatively popular um, uh, white when you look at brands. So it's a white uh, that creates more texture and uh, it has more resistance with the brush. And um, it's great to use if you have palette knife because it doesn't drip as much. So depending on your style of painting, this is a white that um, you may be interested in. I've never, um, I've never tried the flake white, um, but I did try the fast matte titanium white, which is a white that they use or they label themselves. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a white that they manufacture basically, that um, it has a texture as well. Um, yeah, and then it's, uh, it's, it's good when you have a harder white because then uh, you can lay it on top and you don't have to worry too much about uh, mixing uh, the layers underneath. That's what they mention about the, uh, this category. So basically in regards of uh, the stiffness, the soft, the buttery, and the stiff, um, we use the radiant white, it's very soft, but it, has, it also has other qualities that make it uh, excellent. I don't care much about the, the flake white or the fast matte. The fast matte is, it's, if, you, if you really want to, um, it's a great uh, line of colors that they have that, they, that it basically dries very fast. In less than 24 hours, um, you have your painting completely dry. I'd rather you use gall kit, which is the medium that we use to uh, accelerate the oxidation but they have a line that they call it fast matte um, because I feel uh, it facilitates, uh, it's easier for people that uh, get into oil and they feel like they're struggling with uh, the medium not drying fast enough. So I think it's a smart, um, uh, it's a smart marketing uh, ploy, I guess, to have that line. Okay, so I'm gonna jump to uh, another category. So, so instead of like naming each white first and, and, and telling you what they do, I like this because it just uh, categorizes them by um, uh, criteria and then they name the whites at the end. I think it's m much clearer and more uh, educational. So two drying um, categories, fast drying and slow drying. So, um, the fast drying, again, it's the, the, the fast matte and then the quick dry white. Um, so this is only basically um, uh, focused on uh, time. So they don't, they don't mention anything else. And, you know, so 
they call it like uh, the fast drying could be great for underpainting. You know that sometimes I say push the, the white until the end because it's gonna give you problems. Well, if you have a fast drying or a quick uh, dry white, you could use white as a first layer. So if you wanna do a monochromatic layer and you wanna bring in white, um, it's probably a better idea to bring a fast drying white and um, then you don't have to uh, procrastinate no so kind of like get frustrated because you don't you, you don't have white or the whites giving you problems so I've never I never needed oh I never had the need to use it but it's there for that you know um, so and then what else the different uh, painting te techniques uh, underpainting techniques mostly and then the slow drying it's the one that we use uh, radiant white uh, it, it has titanium in it but a different kind of oil so for painters that wish to work um, uh, wet into wet which is what we do or otherwise desire more open time without using mediums we recommend using the radiant white this is basically what we do and that's the reason why we love it it's soft and um, also it's slow drying um, so yeah, it's naturally the slowest drying uh, white in the range and um, it takes about five days, um, five days in thin layers. So um, Sarah uh, Brochure, um, if you're there, um, I don't know if you're using this radiant white or not, but maybe that's the reason why the painting, it's not drying um, fast enough. Um, I'll jump uh, quickly to the tint strength. This is and opacity, this is basically how transparent or opaque it is. Um, and then they basically broke, break it down into two main um, categories, the opaque whites and the transparent whites. And this is um, interesting. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is possibly um, the strongest or not possibly, it is the most important category for me to consider when I paint or when I use a white. I want a white that's white and opaque and um, it just creates great uh, tints, meaning like, you know, a little bit gives me, um, uh, makes uh, a lot of uh, pale, uh, pale colors, I guess. So um, they name here the two that are the most popular, titanium white and radiant white. Titanium, the difference between the two, titanium white uses uh, flax, I mean flax, linseed oil, and radiant white uses safflower oil. What's important also to know here, it's the fact that um, the pigment in paint doesn't change. It's the binder in the paint that changes over time. The pigment remains the same always. So uh, titanium white, a radiant white, they both have titanium in them. So uh, they have the exact same pigment. The only thing that changes is the uh, binder. Titanium white has linseed oil. Radiant white has safflower oil. Same pigment, different mediums. What happens? Um, so uh, basically, we can go over this later in the final category, but uh, it, it, the temperature of the white changes and the drying time. But these are the whitest, most opaque whites, titanium and radiant white. Titanium, it's pretty much standard. The radiant white, it's uh, uh, a name that uh, they came up with. So, um, you know, uh, every manufacturer has a different formula. You will not find radiant white with um, other manufacturers. Um, but anyhow, so, um, and then um, the transparent whites. This is something really important because I feel like the next best thing, or not the next best thing, best thing the, the next most popular thing after titanium, and you've heard this a lot, uh, is zinc white. So in my experience, I've always been confused when I go to the art store. I never know if I should get, and now I know, but before it's like, should I get titanium white or should I get zinc white? And maybe I never ask uh, or, you know, <laughs> there's a point where you think like you uh, know, you're, an, you're considered an oil painter and then you go to the store and then you feel ashamed of asking, hey, uh, which white would you use? <laughs> this happens all the time. Uh, maybe it was that. I don't know. I just felt like I got the zinc white. I used it and I just felt, uh, you know, it wasn't really white enough. <laughs> so then I decided not to use it anymore. And that's possibly the wrong approach because I did this not knowing what the white was supposed to uh, give me. 
So the best thing about zinc white is that it's the least opaque. So um, it's, the, it's the white that has more transparency. So it's a great white if you want to do glazes. You know, sometimes when we work on a painting and we want to work over the painting, uh, using titanium white uh, or radium white could be too strong. And then uh, we sort of like overwhelm the color and then we apply a brush stroke and immediately remove it. So a, a zinc white, it's a really mellow. It's mellow, uh, not translucent, but it's not uh, as, it doesn't have a, as much coverage. And sometimes, you know, um, you may feel like you want something that it's not as strong as the titanium. And sometimes I feel like that, you know, I have zinc white, I barely use it. Um, I haven't used it in, 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 used it in years because I could get transparency with titanium using mediums. So sometimes um, I'd rather uh, use other means rather than get yet a new paint in my palette and rely or depend on something new. So um, anyhow, so that's the difference. It's zinc white. I mean, they call the titanium white the best white for impressionistic uh, paintings because impressionists really wanted to capture light. So they wanted to have the brightest, most opaque, um, white uh, possible. Zinc white is more uh, old school, more sort of like Renaissance style of painting. When you do different layers or several layers on top of each other, and you want a white that doesn't overpower uh, the rest of the mixtures. So um, you have here all the whites and creating tints, I guess. Uh, I mean, I didn't even go through this, but uh, they're pretty much the same. <laughs> except the last one. So to me, it's just a waste of time and money. Uh, if you want to get them all, it just doesn't make sense. And some people, you know, it's good to listen. I'm all for options. It's good to get options. But um, the final one, it, that, they don't even break it into uh, categories, temperature. Um, you know, some, uh, they call, they say that some abstract artists that use um, uh, white paint uh, they're more interested in different temperatures of white. And they put an example uh, here with this painting. It makes sense for that, you know. And here's when uh, basically the um, uh, titanium, if you put linseed oil, it has a little bit more warmth. I don't see it. Um, well, maybe, I, let me just say this. I, I do see it. I, I'm sorry. I see it because when I use the radiant white and the safflower, safflower oil is clear. Uh, linseed oil is yellow. So... I, when I use the titanium white, I only see white, but, but when I use a radiant white with safflower oil, I think it's brighter. And it's because the linseed oil, I mean, uh, it's safflower oil, but it's clear. They, then they say they recommend best all around white, which is another white I introduced that it wasn't even put in the list, which is a combination of titanium, zinc, uh, titanium and zinc pigments mixed together. So this is another, um, uh, Goldilocks white in which now you have two pigments combined, uh, meaning the best of titanium, which is coverage, and the best of zinc, which is certain transparency. I, I don't know. Uh, I think I, I need to try it, I guess, but uh, I, I don't know. I'm more like black and white than this. <laughs> you either use titanium or you use zinc or you buy both and then you mix them. But um, Anyhow, so it'd be interesting to find out what's the, the marketing, um, the sell-throughs on these colors. And then this is uh, the most interesting sort of like a chart. Uh, I know it's super small, but if you can enlarge the uh, image, you can pin the screen, by the way, and um, just uh, hide everyone else if you want to. But they basically list all, you have in here, list all the whites, the seven whites. Uh, so now they sort of like put the categories at the end because uh, this is uh, arranged by name. And then um, uh, a little comment uh, or characteristics, uh, titanium highest uh, tinting strength and radiant white, the brightest, whitest uh, oil color. So between the two of them, to me, th those two are the most important. I wouldn't buy, uh, I mean, first of all, you can just go, buy with titanium and that's fine. You don't need a zinc white and you don't need uh, a titanium with safflower. Um, anyhow, we evolved. We moved from titanium to radium because it's brighter. Um, it, it slows. 
the drying is like a little slower, titanium dries faster. I mean, I don't know, maybe this is an issue that we should consider for painters that are not experienced with oil. And at the very beginning, they want something fast uh, drying. I'm in the school of thought that I'd rather use the uh, ultimate most professional material and go by the learning curve, whatever time that takes. So I, I, I prefer to get the right habits first rather than just get some quick satisfaction with something and then change those habits later. I just, I know myself and I feel like if I get something that it's a shortcut for me, um, then I'll feel lazy to explore something beyond that and it will affect my painting. So why not get the titanium white uh, um, or, um, you know, the radiant white with a sunflower? It, it's slow drying, which means that it may give you problems at the beginning. Uh, I'd rather deal with it. But then what's important here, it's the uh, strength, the tinting strength. It goes from 10 maximum. And then um, from zinc white at the bottom, it's two. And I'm not gonna go into detail because I already um, used up half an hour, but basically uh, the titanium and zinc has a, a, a opacity of seven and then the flake white, uh, which is the one that had more body, uh, six, uh, the fast mat is the same um, with six. And then um, the temperature, I don't really care for that. And then uh, the mark making the thickness. So yeah, I, it basically it's important to know that um, one white can do all the work and that's fine. Um, zinc is beautiful. If you, I'm gonna tr start introducing it uh, in my own practice, I just want to see if I can give me uh, a little bit more of a softness. Uh, why? Because let's, what I tried to say earlier, it's like sometimes I get to acro because I feel it's a good substitute of white because I feel white is too strong. So perhaps the zinc white could be that white that could help us create lighter tones without uh, risking um, obliterating the paint or the mix uh, with too much um, coverage. So um, I have it, I'm gonna give it a try. Um, other than titanium with safflower, which is the radiant white. Uh, I don't know, if you, if you have spare change, uh, get it and then see how it works out. And then really quickly, uh, I'm just gonna go uh, uh, about the blacks. They have six blacks and uh, there's less categorization because white paint is uh, uh, fundamental. It's more important and possibly we should just kind of like say this more often about the palette because we don't talk about uh, these issues enough and that's why I love these sessions. Uh, but white, it's probably the most important uh, paint. I wouldn't say color. I wouldn't say color. White is mo the most important paint in our palette uh, just because um, uh, we end up using it later to create tints and that uh, gives us uh, basically the opportunity to work with uh, second notes um, so the consistency, drying time, uh, opacity uh, are important. Um, and that's why it's an important paint. And then uh, in regards to black, um, so they have, uh, this is like more uh, standard in regards of like these names being applied to other brands, uh, except for a couple that they just came up with. Um, the ivory black and the Mars black and the paints gray and the Van Dyke brown are the classic blacks. These are the most um, mainstream blacks, those four, ivory, Mars, paints gray, and Van Dyke um, brown. So we, we favor uh, paints gray. Um, you should say, you should, we should know that the darkest, blackest black, it's Mars black. So this is the black that it's super strong. You cannot get any darker than that. So I feel like for um, what we do, which is basically, uh, we always open our atelier for anyone, whether they're professional or never painted before, incorporating a color that potentially has so much uh, power to change a palette, it's risky. Um, that's the reason why we'd rather work with paints gray, which is a cold, black but we can always make it warmer adding raw umber for example so for for us for me uh, uh, in my own practice i have uh, mars black and i have ivory black 
um, I use Mars Black, um, I, I wouldn't say often, but I do use it. Because sometimes I really need something to be very, very dark. Um, anyhow, so uh, basically they go over the categorization, ivory black, um, the most widely used black, um, it's made for burnt, from burnt bone. Um, so uh, it, before ivory black, um, or after I would say, um, I should say after, uh, it was called, um, it's called bone black. Semi-transparent, which means uh, you know the opacity, it's not uh, full strength. Moderate tinting strength, so it doesn't overwhelm mixtures, making it a good all-around mixing black. Um, so if you like ivory black, you uh, but find that it dulls mixtures a bit too much, consider chromatic black. That's something a black that they came up with. Um, I don't use it. Um, I, yeah, I don't use it. It's made out of bone, so <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, yeah, so anyhow, that's personally it's me. I'd rather use um, a mineral base than an animal based product, but that's me. Um, and um, I don't know. I, I I like the fact that people consider it because it's a middle of the road. It's not super black. So that's what's most important in regards of using black. Um, Mars Black, it's synthetic iron oxide, uh, very opaque, very strong tinting uh, strength, um, overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelming in color mixtures. So this is a black that you need to know what you're doing if you use it, because you cannot use it just to darken. You need to know that the power of this black, uh, you know, overrides everything. So sometimes the, the, the biggest, um, the biggest um, thing that we notice when someone ha that has never painted before comes to our sessions is the fact that they use very bright colors and then uh, it's all black or black and white. You know, the, the paint's great, it's not black enough. They need something much, much stronger. So I, I feel like, you know, they're on a long road to diversify uh, their uh, color spectrum and value spectrum, I guess. But um, we have it. Uh, if we request it um, by someone, we use it. It's a nuclear paint. I call it a nuclear paint. It, a little bit can completely get out of control. Um, you don't need it. Um, it it's not a fundamental, it's not an essential paint, um, but it's fun to have. Um, this one I've never heard before. I shouldn't say this, but a black uh, spinel, a spinel, one of the most unique blacks in our line. Uh, it's a dense texture and dries to a very matte appearance. So I wonder if this is part of their line. Um, I've never seen it in any other brand. So again, they just came up with a, maybe came up with a black that it's thicker and then um, it, for people that like to paint with a palette or thicker brushes. Um, so this is a very interesting one that, I've, that they came up with. Um, that I'm going to mention it because we can do this ourselves. We don't need to uh, buy it, but they call it chromatic black. Chromatic black because it's made out of color. Um, and this is very interesting. So basically when you mix two opposite um, colors in the color wheel, uh, the green and the red, you get a really dark tone. So what they did is basically exactly that, the uh, quinacridone red and phthalo emerald. Uh, mixed together, and then they, they, they just get a really deep, luxurious, velvety, velvety uh, black. So we don't have to do this because we can use paints gray with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of ecru to, um, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what am I talking about? Paints gray with raw umber mixed together, and we can get something really dark, very um, luscious and uh, shiny and luxurious, and we don't need to do that. But this is very interesting. Um, with the uh, quinacridone and the uh, phthalo, um, they created a gorgeous black. And then the latest black that I started using this two weeks ago, Van Dyke Brown. And I love it. Let me just tell you this. We may switch our paint gray, our beloved paint gray. We may end up switching from paint gray to Van Dyke Brown in the future. That's how much I love it. I'm not sure yet because I love the coolness of the paints gray and the Van Dyke Brown is basically a really, really dark raw umber. So um, it's, um, 
um, it's a warm black. I don't know. I think you can make an, an alternative color by using paints gray um, and a little bit of raw umber. But the Vine Dyke has great uh, grays, uh, creates great grays. So it's a contemporary permanent version of a historical color. And it's one of uh, one that we consider to be the warmest black on the palette. Its formula includes some iron oxide in the mix, uh, which contributes to its warmth. Uh, it's semi-transparent, which I like because the paint's great. It's also semi-transparent. We don't want blacks that are super opaque because uh, they, they will take over. They will take over and then we'll end up doing more. Instead of layering, it's going to be more like uh, painting by numbers or illustration work. Uh, so having a black that is semi-transparent is very important. Um, so basically... Uh, Yes. Um, let me see if I do this. What did I do? Yeah. Uh, okay, good. So, um, yeah. So this is basically um, the presentation and I hope it wasn't too boring. And um, I'm gonna basically now uh,